Okay, well, hello everybody. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I've posted a video. It's not that I haven't been working on the plane, it's just that most of what I've been doing, or a lot of what I've been doing, uh, was similar to the content that I've already posted. So I've been uh, working on the front spar assembly for the horizontal stabilizer, and a lot of that work was very similar to the rear spar assembly. So uh, straightening the spar doubler earlier there, and now deburring the doubler, and uh, I'll be moving on to deburring the spar itself in uh, just a second. And, you know, not a bad way to spend a, a pleasant afternoon on the patio here. Uh, so there I'm deburring with a file, and uh, then I use the 1 inch 3M wheel in the drill, and uh, come back with a uh, scotch Bright pad chucked in a little mandrel that I have. I love that thing. Uh, so yeah, lots and lots of deburring, um, but it's got to get done. And you get pretty grubby doing it. Another thing I've done over the past couple of weeks is I remade the left front spar attachment bracket. There's the parts I ordered from Vans, six bucks each for those two five inch long uh, pieces of angle, and I threw in some extra bags of rivets just to make the shipping worthwhile. You'll notice I'm wearing gloves here. I learned my lesson last time when you're cutting through those thick uh, pieces of aluminum making long cuts, it can get pretty hot. I uh, did the same process to cut the angle. I went ahead and made a cut at the right angle and then used that to set the angle of the table of my saw. Worked out fine, as you can see there. Uh, when I made the first one, I wasn't happy with the drill holes. That's why I'm redoing this here anyway. And so I'm just taking my time here and working my way up from the small pilot bit, uh, just very carefully up through each successive size of bit that I've got. And everything came out great this time. Maybe it's because I have a helper. And there I'm comparing the two. And here I'm radiusing the corners. I saved that for last. And so there they are. I'll talk more in a minute about what I'm doing here. Uh, but needless to say, I'm really happy with the result. And so I have to show it off a little bit. All right, so I've got the front spar and the front spar doubler deburred. I've remade this uh, left-hand front spar mounting bracket, attachment bracket. I uh, did that because I wasn't super happy with uh, how the first one came out. The holes were a little bit off. I'm sure they would have been fine. Uh, it was the two bottom holes, which you match drill through to the tail cone anyway when you go to mount the tail. Uh, the ones the plans tell you to be real careful to, to get you know, perfect are these top ones that are going to set the alignment uh, with the with the spar web here, and then you match drill, you know, eight more holes, so there's nine total. So it's real important to get those, you know, perfectly, uh, you know, positioned. And I have. So, uh, you know, the plans don't tell you why, uh, unless you, you know, when you flip through, if you, if you go to the section of mounting the tail, you can figure it out. This is, this is going to set, for one thing, it's going to set the angle of incidence of the tail plane, of the horizontal uh, stabilizer. So, uh, you will be shimming these under here a little bit, and I guess, uh, you know, you could probably adjust it to some degree by, you know, by picking different thicknesses of shim. But uh, the other thing is you would want, I mean, you wouldn't want it to be too far off, but then the other thing is I think you want them to be, you know, the same, uh, especially vertically, because if, if, you know, if the two are off from each other, it's going to make your tail crooked. Uh, it wouldn't take, you know, a very small error between these two here is a much bigger error out at the ends. So that's actually the reason I've got this Clico together now. I'm going to have to take it apart, but um, I Clicoed it together and clamped it to my table uh, and measured, you know, the, the, out, out a ways, and uh, they were identical. Identical. So uh, that's good. That's what I wanted. I actually considered clamping, uh, when I was remaking this one, I considered clamping it to the back of this one and just match drilling through. Kind of wonder if people do that. The plans don't tell you to do it that way, but it seemed like it might have been a good idea. I did not do that because I've already, you know, I already had this hole drilled to its almost final size. It'll get final drilled up to number 30, I think, uh, when I do this. But that, that'll be final drilling it to this guy. And if I had thought it through uh, ahead of time when I was making these, I might have stopped at, you know, one size less than an eighth and then gone and made this one and then, you know, clamped them back to back and, and drilled through this 
you know, match drill this at a one eighth to this, and then I would know that they were, you know, exactly the same uh, height. But again, they came out perfectly anyway, so I'm happy with that. Uh, I'd also like to thank the guys that recommended using chalk, putting chalk on my file uh, to keep the file from loading up with material when I was working on this guy. That worked perfectly, so great tip there. Thank you. And so now I'm going to mark a quarter inch in from the tips of the, uh, the spar caps here, line that up with the 33rd hole on the uh, front spar flange, and match drill all that. So that's next. So that's what I'm doing here. I've got the spar cap clamped to the edge of the table to keep it straight. I put a little mark a quarter of an inch in from either end of the spar cap and then count 33 holes in from each end of the uh, on the spar itself along the spar flange and mark those holes and then nest the spar cap up under the spar flange so that I can see the marks that I put on the spar cap through the 33rd holes and that's how you get the, the spar cap centered uh, in the spar itself. And I clamp it in place with about 100 clamps because I want to keep it straight and it's got that sort of natural bend to it as part of the, you know, that's part of the manufacturing process and you want to straighten that out. Uh, and then I start match drilling. I've got it on these 2x4s here, um, sort of a makeshift holder so that I don't drill through and, you know, hit my table. And um, yeah, just match drill uh, through the spar web into the spar cap. Once I've done that, I can take it apart and deburr all those holes that I just, uh, those new holes that I just made in the spar cap. So uh, that's what I'm doing here. I'm giving it a quick once over with the scotch Bright pad and then I go at all the holes with the, uh, my hex deburring bit in the electric screwdriver. And then the battery dies in the electric screwdriver and I do a bunch of them by hand, which works well. Uh, it works just, you know, a little more tedious, but it works just fine. Just twist that thing with my fingers. Then I switch over to the spar, and I guess I switched over to the carpal tunnel tool there. Get those cleaned up. So now I've got the spar cap clicoed back in place uh, through all the holes in the spar web, and I'm match drilling. I've also got a another 100 clamps holding it up tight against the spar flange itself, and I'm match drilling those holes, the holes through the spar flange into the spar cap. And somewhere along the lines here, I miss one. Uh, I've watched the video over, and I can't see when I actually do it, but uh, you'll see it in a minute. So now I can take everything back apart and deburr those holes, which is what I'm doing here. And somewhere in here, I notice that I missed one. Ah. So I go ahead and <laughs> clean everything up a little bit and clico it back up in place uh, just around the area where I missed one. And go ahead and drill that one. All right, so that's better. And now I finish up deburring the underside of that spar flange, all those holes that I had match drilled. And that's pretty much it for the first one. And now I just have to go do the whole thing over again for the other spar flange. So we'll move through that pretty quickly. All right, so pretty important step coming up here. Uh, at this point, I've got the spar doubler and the spar caps clicoed to the spar web. And I've also got, you can hopefully see in the video here, I've got the two attachment brackets clicoed to the front of the spar doubler. And so the step here, uh, there you can see them a little better and I flipped it over. So the, the, coming, the step coming up here is gonna be to match drill the additional eight holes 
through the spar web, spar doubler, and into the attachment brackets for each of the attachment brackets. So each one is held on by nine rivets in a three by three pattern. And so right now they each only have one hole, and that's the hole that sort of sets the alignment for each that I mentioned earlier. And now I've got to drill the additional eight holes in each. And the procedure here is to clamp uh, the two, uh, the bottom parts of the attachment brackets, that's what I'm doing here, clamp it to something flat. Uh, so what I've got here is a piece of angle iron that's, uh, you know, that I just bought from the hardware store, and I'm clamping the two attachment brackets to that to keep them in the same plane. Uh, I bought a longer piece of angle iron than I needed, and my thinking there uh, was, and you can see right there what I'm doing, my thinking there was if they extend out a little ways then I can measure the distance between the spar and the piece of angle iron at the tips and just sort of double check that, that the distance is the same. And you know that gives me confidence that the, the two pieces are, that the tail is going to be straight when I mount it to uh, hopefully my straight tail cone that I'm, I've yet to build. So uh, that's what I'm getting ready to do here. It turns out the whole contraption all hooked together is pretty heavy, so I've got my helper there to at least help hold it up while I drill through uh, those holes. And so there's the first one. I actually drilled, let me think here, it's a number 30 hole, uh, but I drilled with a number 31 bit, so a slightly smaller bit. And then I come back through right here with the number 30 reamer. And my thinking there is just it'll make a cleaner hole uh, out of the whole deal. And that, you know, that seemed to work out. Certainly didn't seem to hurt anything. And now I'm doing the other one. And it makes a pretty good bit of chips because you are going through some thick material. So I'll keep vacuuming it up. And then you Clico it in place through several of the holes and match drill that final hole uh, that was the original 1 8 hole. And I'm done. So now I'm cleaning them up with the deburring bit. My, my uh, cordless screwdriver has charged itself and I've even got a helper there vacuuming up. So here's a couple of uh, quick stills of the whole angle iron clamp arrangement and uh, before and after of the results. So here I think we fast forward to the following weekend, actually. I'm wearing my nicest t-shirt there. Uh, I know this video is getting kind of long, but there's really only a couple more steps that I go through before I ended up going ahead and priming all the parts to the front and rear spar assembly, so I thought I'd go ahead and show them here. So uh, here I'm final drilling some more of the holes through the doubler and the spar web. And here I'm match drilling some of the larger holes. They end up, uh, the final size is a number 12. Uh, match drilling some of those larger holes through the doubler web and into the spark cap using a new little tool that I bought for myself. So I thought I'd talk about that. All right, I thought I'd uh, take a minute to talk about this little, little goodie I bought for myself not too long ago. Uh, and just used on the front spar here. So uh, it's called a drill bushing kit or a slip bushing kit. Uh, it was a, this is the 10 piece kit. It comes with nine different sizes of bushings and then the little egg cup guy there. Uh, pretty obvious how it works. You take the size bushing that corresponds to the drill bit you're about to use, put it in there, twist it, uh, sort of lock it and then, you know, tighten that screw down and sort of lock it in. And then, you know, obviously it, uh, is, a, is a guide for the drill bit to keep the drill bit perpendicular to the material. Uh, I thought it would be helpful for some of these places where you've got to drill a sort of a bigger hole through some thicker material where you're mash drilling. In other words, uh, where you're drilling and at least one or one of the pieces doesn't have a pilot hole through it at all. Um, so you, you, know, you have to kind of bear down a little bit. Um, it takes a little while. You're, you're spending some time applying pressure there and you, you don't want to wobble the drill bit around and wallow out the hole. So uh, it worked pretty well. I doubt I'll use it all over the place. Um, there'll probably be lots of places where, you know, I'd like to use it and, you know, I'll be, I won't have enough room, you know. Um, if I had had to drill this hole from the bottom side, the spar flange would have gotten in the way, but um, that's why I 
flipped it over and moved the moved the clinkos to the bottom so that I could uh, you know get this thing right here and, and it worked just fine so uh, yeah happy with that it was I want to say it was like 79 bucks which probably isn't isn't cheap for the number of times I'll probably end up using it all all things considered but uh, on the other hand if it keeps me from screwing up an important hole in an important piece it's probably well worth the money so uh, anyway liked it so far so there you go uh, so what I'm doing here is machine countersinking eight holes in the front uh, of the front spar doubler and uh, they're in kind of an interesting pattern. I haven't looked ahead in the plans, but if I had to guess the reason these eight holes need to be machine countersunk, countersinked, countersunk, uh, is because uh, I'm guessing this is where the front spar of the vertical stabilizer you know, protrudes down into the, into the tail cone where the vertical stabilizer was actually attached to the plane, uh, and that these need to be countersunk to provide clearance for that. Um, so now what I'm doing is uh, setting up my countersink cutter for the uh, smaller rivet to machine countersink nine holes on each side of the spar flange in the very center area of the spar where uh, there won't be any skin because this will be the part of the spar that is inside of the tail cone. And uh, so I'm setting up to do that. So if anyone's ever wondered what this pink goop is that I occasionally put on my uh, drill bits or on these countersink cutters, it's called Bow Shield. It's like a real soft paraffin. It's a lubricant. Uh, it's made by Boeing, or at least developed by Boeing, so it must be good. And uh, yeah, I mean, it should make the cutters and the drill bits, you know, cut a little easier and last a little longer. It definitely seems to make them uh, cut a little easier. I don't always use it, uh, but if I'm going through thicker material or, or on the cutters, I'll try to use it. So here I've taken everything apart, uh, marked it, and I'm giving it once, you know, one more, uh, once over with the deburring. You don't really need to mark things, that, as far as I can remember, on the front spar assembly. On the rear spar assembly, things stay pretty symmetrical, so you could, uh, you, you know, there is no top and bottom left and right. On the front spar assembly, those, those mounting brackets sort of, def, you know, the whole patterns for those sort of define what is the bottom of the spar, the spar doubler, and which is the bottom of the spar cap. So marking things is not as important uh, on that, but I did go ahead and do it. Uh, and yeah, so I got everything all cleaned up, and then the following day I primed it. And so I'll have some pictures here of my priming setup and then the final primed parts.